What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to another episode number four. You know, we kicking things off. Super excited. Sis, we back. We back. Another episode. Um, but shout out to y'all, man. So thank y'all for tuning in. If you're watching, listening, thank y'all for tuning in and continuously, you know, just rocking with us as we grow on a daily. But, you know, today's episode is going to be pretty fun. But Breezy, how you feeling, man? Talk feeling good. Me. I want to thank everybody for the for the support. You know, coming on here last last episode, I think I definitely appreciate all the support. Um, people reaching out to me, stuff like that. Definitely appreciate it for real. Uh, especially is one person in particular asked for this video. So here you go. This, yeah. this is gonna be a good video. This is for you. Um, it's yeah. gonna be dope. It's gonna be dope. Yeah. So we we wanted to you know before we even moved on to like you know bigger topics and things like that. We we posted some content and we thought it was very important to really allow mm -hmm. the audience to get to know who Bria was. You know what I mean? Of course, she came on last episode and you spoke a little bit about, you know, who you was and some things that you had going on. Uh, but I think that it was very important for the audience. And, you know, shout out to the special person who, you know, kind of recommended this idea. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? To really open up a little bit more so the audience can get to know you. You know what I'm saying? So today, you know, although she's the co-host, you know, it's going to be as if, like, she's a guest today. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it's definitely imperative as the guest, not as the guest, but as the host um, of the show to really be able to relate to the audience. So that's what we're going to do today. It's kind of going to be very dope. So today, you know, we really want to just kind of dive into who is, you know, Bria. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, who is Bria? So we're going to pick your brain and really kind of challenge you so the people could get what they want. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They, yeah. they kind of want yeah, it's they what know, for. you know who you are. So my thing for you is just to kind of start, just kind of, you know, talk to them real quick. Again, I know you spoke a little bit about who you were, mm -hmm last episode, but kind of give them a little bit, you know, more, you know, who is Bria Hill? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, where do you come from? Um, how did you grow up? You know, your background, family, give us a little bit about you for real. All right. So, um, I'm from Philadelphia, um, born and raised in Philly, went to high school, Northeast high school, shout out to my Vikings. Um, then I came on with the Dell State. Um, but as a kid, um, for a while, for what, six years, it was just me. Um, my mom only had me and then it was my little sister. 20 years later, it was another little sister. sister. So, yeah. so my mom's side, um, I am the oldest of three. Um, on my father's side, I am the middle child of seven. Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up wasn't wasn't really, it wasn't, of course we had, you know, difficult times, yeah, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I love my childhood and I'm thankful for my childhood. It, it uh, made me into who I am. From being around my cousins to mm -hmm. like, we were very family oriented. So like, everything was like family for me. Mm -hmm. So like, even now to this day, I'm big on family. Dope. Yeah, big family person. We had little traditions that we kept on. Yeah. I said, yeah, I think I think the the reason I am where I am now, like my biggest my biggest motivation is my family. I look gotcha. to them for everything, for my support, for like my yeses and my noes, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, family, family definitely shaped me to be you know who I am today. That's dope. And I heard you said uh, a little bit about you was by yourself for a couple years. Yeah. You said right. So. Yeah. How was that like? I mean, of course, you had a couple years where you was kind of alone, you yeah. know. So, what did it feel like being the only one? You know, what honestly, I, mean? I don't even remember. I was yeah. like, once when I was six is when my mom had my oh, younger so you sister. Was like so a yeah, young, young. Okay. so I was I was young. So like, okay. you know, after that, it was it was me and her gotcha. the whole time. Gotcha. The crazy thing is, you know, me and my little sister we couldn't stand each other at first. So like. That's like, tough. when I was in middle school, elementary school, and she was coming up, like, I don't want you to go with me. I don't want you to tag along with me. Now, like, that's, like, my little sister, like, she's, like, my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, yeah, so, like, that's, it, it wasn't, like, a while where I was by myself. So, I don't mm -hmm. really even remember being by myself for real. Yeah. And, and kind of, yeah, and kind of hearing when you talk about, you know, your family a little bit, you know, obviously growing up, you know, with a couple of siblings, but being, you know, the oldest of three. Yeah. Right? Um, talk a little bit about, you know, the, the importance of being that, that role model and that 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 figure for yeah. your siblings because you know often you know I'm the last of four mm -hmm. you're the oldest of three so yeah. I know for me if the roles was flipped you know me being the youngest child I was looking up to my older yeah. siblings you know what I mean like yeah. how are y'all painting a picture for me to be able to kind of do great things yeah. in the world but for you you know you was the oldest so like you had that you know you had that narrative of okay now that I have younger siblings mm -hmm. I have to kind of make sure I'm doing things in a way that they can duplicate yeah. but not only just kind of be at the same level but be better so mm -hmm. what was that feeling like did you feel the pressure or did you kind of feel like this is of course it's a blessing but or did you feel yeah. like you know I got this you know what I mean like how yeah. was it for you so for me um not only am I the only, oldest of my my three my three siblings on my mom's side well my two siblings well, on my mom's side okay. but also my my grandma so like my grandma i'm the oldest grandchild mm -hmm. so all of my i have there's 13 of us all together my grandma has 13 grandchildren 
So under us, I mean, under me, it's literally the uh -huh. oldest grandchild. So it was like, for me, it's, it's always been that role of, you know, being a motivator. So right. like for me, I was like the first generation college student uh, graduate. So like, I don't know, I've always taken it, I've always taken it on. So like, even like now, like my little sister, I never even knew this, but like one time, like after I graduated, she was like, there's nobody I look up to more. Wow. And that like, yo, like that was just like, whoa, hiding. what? Like, it's crazy. Like, I don't know, like now, like, especially I like, having a younger, younger sibling. So like, um, the one that's directly under me is 19. The one that's mm -hmm. under her is six. So like having like both of them like look at me is like I know I gotta do great. Yeah. I know I gotta you know to to show them the right way to go. Like so when I, like when I went to college, all my little cousins under me like they know they gotta duplicate that. Right. Like, either duplicate it or, right. or even do better. Like mm -hmm. so like nowadays you don't need like I got one little cousin. Uh, she's has a hair business. I have like Amazing. another little cousin. He's trying to be a boxer. Another little cousin. He's a great. He's a great artist. Like enjoy my little sister. is great at basketball. Like you know. So like they they make me proud every day. Like you know so. It's just like for me, I embrace it. Like it never That's was amazing. like, oh my god, like this is hard to like mm -hmm. carry this weight. It was for me, it was like always like I always embraced it. So yeah. I love it. And and how can you? And, well, before I get to that, you mentioned your little sister. Mm. I mean, not to talk about her specifically, yeah. but you know, one of your sisters, she does play college ball. The one that plays basketball. Listen, I will. You know, yeah. I will talk about her. Oh yeah, day. I already know. Shout out, shout out to you, Danae, right? Yeah, Danae, 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 yeah. Shout out to you, Danae. But you know, she's a stud on the court, and she goes to Miss. Is it Mississippi, Mississippi State? Mississippi State. Yeah, she Mississippi goes to Mississippi State, State. So shout out to you guys as well on a phenomenal season. Um, but what is that like? You know, like having a sister, and, and again, this is not to make it seem as if she's any superior. Yeah, no, yeah, than anybody. No, yeah, yeah. But what is it like knowing that? You potentially have a sister that you love dearly that may possibly be going to the WNBA. Man, it's it's amazing because like for me, so I play I play sports my entire life. I played basketball, um, tore my ACL twice. So like for me, like my my stuff got shot down. Like mm -hmm. you know, I coming into when I was in high school, I had people that were supposed to come and look at me my junior year. I tore my ACL, couldn't play. So like for me, I came to Dell State, walked on, and then got hurt again. Mm -hmm. So like watching her like. I don't know. Like some people be like, you know, because for me, b girls basketball wasn't as big as it is now. No, right. So like some of my favorites, like yo, like you know, like my mom. Even my mom sometimes, like she didn't support me playing basketball. Mm -hmm. um, my mom did not support it at all. She didn't want well, me to. How, I don't mean. To, how was that though? Real quick, like was that? It, 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 was, that was, hard. Hard? it was hard. It was very hard. Um, it was very hard. She Got didn't it. support it at all. She was against it. Um, a lot of my family was, but. And before me was my uncle. Yeah. So my uncle played basketball. He so it was like college. Through the family yeah, he ran through the family. He was in college and then he was in the NBA. So for me, it was like, this is what I want to do. That's like, right. you you had me at his games at a young age. That's like, right. this is all I want to do. So now, like, back to her, like, watching her, like, seeing how good she is and, like, the things that she can do, like, at her age, like, yeah, like, you know, basketball was, in more, basketball was more advanced now for women than it was back in the day. But, like, seeing the things that she could do, I'm just like, yo, like, you're great. That's dope. Like, and for me, like when I when I go out there in Mississippi, and like the people are like we be in stores That's off dope. campus, and people come up to us like, oh, the Nate Carter. Oh, I'm like, dope, yo, like man. it's it's amazing. Like for me, I don't take, I don't feel any way about it. Like mm -hmm. even like my, I said, my family like they didn't support me when I played, but like now seeing the support they have for her, like I love it. Yeah. Like I embrace it. Like yes, like come out here and watch mm -hmm. her. Like like it's I, any chance I get, I repost it. Like it's Got it's it. like for me, it, it's a blessing. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And do you feel like, because I know you said it's a thing where it kind of ran through the family of yeah. all athletes and basketball players, but do you feel like for her it was more so she kind of fell in love with it on her own, or was it a thing where she saw that you was a basketball or a basketball no. player and she kind of like wanted to, you know, be in your footsteps, you know what I'm saying? So what would you say about that? Because I know sometimes having siblings, a yeah. lot of times we always, or even being a parent, you know, we play a sport, yeah. oh, my son going to yeah. play football, my daughter going to play this and that, so... Do you feel like it was one of those things where it's like, right, I want my sister to play football? Or did she kind of like do it on her own? Like, I, oh, I want to play yeah. basketball. You know what I mean? Like, how, how did that go for her? Crazy thing is, she, Danae never wanted to play basketball. She never wanted to play she basketball. She never wanted to play basketball. Okay. To play basketball. So, like, when, for me, um, I had AAU practice and stuff like that. My mom was at work. So, then you act on the practice with me. Mm. She never wanted to go. Or she would come and bring something and be doing her own thing. Um, she wanted to do dancing or cheerleading yeah. or gymnastics. Like, she never, like, her big thing, she wanted to cheerleading. She would always say, but she, was very active. Mm -hmm. So one day I was at practice, um, my coach was like, you know, we got a younger team that's actually practicing in the back of the gym. Like, do you want to go over there? She was like, no, no. He's like, yo, you have so much energy that I can see you doing it. Wow. Even one of my aunts, one of my aunts, um, she played basketball as well. Uh, she always told me, like, you're, if you play basketball, you're going to be great. Wow. Janae never wanted to. So one day she went back there, she practiced with them. 
I remember the first basket she ever got was on the other team's court. That's crazy. She never wanted. She never nah. wanted to play basketball. Like she actually, That's she tough. she fell in love with her on home, like on her That's own. She, and even like a couple of years up until like now, like even a couple of years ago, then they like she played it because she was good at it mm-hmm. because you know this was like the thing to do. But she never like she didn't fall in love with it until like recently. Like she didn't fall yeah. in love with it the way that we did. Yeah. Like me and my, my, you know, so. Gotcha. But seeing like seeing her now, like how she is now, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And I always think that's a good thing because it's like, you know, as kids or siblings or whatever the case may be, it's like oftentimes we have people who want to fulfill the role of their mm-hmm. parents' legacy or their siblings' legacy. She ain't want to do and that. it's like you have people who could be so great at the sport or great at whatever it is that they mm-hmm. want to do, but it gets to that breaking point where they sometimes they realize that this is ultimately yeah. not what they want yeah, to do. Yeah, they're only doing it because you know? that's, what, that's what they yeah, see. Yeah, so it's like, I think that's good that she decided to do it on her own and it mm-hmm. wasn't a thing of, oh, I feel forced or exactly. pressured because my family yeah. is encouraging it. So, you know, huge shout out to her again in the Mississippi State uh, squad, you know, for a phenomenal season. So I know that must feel good for you. And now let's kind of tie back into, um, I do want to talk about the person on your, on your, on your neck, you know, mm-hmm. your brother, yeah. right? So... Um, that's your blood brother? Yeah. Uh, right? And, and, you know, I know he passed away three years ago. Mm. And I know that may be a very, uh, you know, still a sensitive thing because three years is still pretty, you know, still pretty relevant, mm. you know, still right there. Um, so talk about your relationship and how, yeah. um, you know, if you want to talk about how the whole thing happened for mm. you and kind of how were you able to get over that? Yeah. You know, like how did you use that to like your advantage in terms of knowing that you want to kind of live up to his legacy and make him proud? So mm. like how did, you know, how did that happen for you? Yeah, so for me... Um it's crazy because that's my brother on my dad's side. Um, so we met when I was, I don't remember the exact age, probably like maybe eight uh, when we met. And he was, he's two years old, he's uh, three years older than me. So we met and, no, I'm sorry, he's two years older than me. So we met and I was like, for me, I always looked up to the men in my family. Mm-hmm. Like me, I'm very big, like with my uncles, my dad, like my uncle is one of my favorite people in the world. Yeah. I always looked up to the men in my family. Um, and so when I first met my brother, I was like, he came to my house. That's where he met at. That's where I met him at. I was like so happy. Like, oh, this is my big He's brother. Excited. Like, this is my big brother. I'm not like running around tonight, everybody. That's my big brother. Um, and you said you met him when? I met him when I was eight. You met him when you was eight? Yeah, when old. I was okay. eight. Yeah. So he was about 10, 11. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Like, he was like real quiet, real shy. But I was just like, I was just excited mm-hmm. that I had a brother. Because like I said, uh, it was just me and my sister. So like when I finally like, found out I had a brother met him, I was like super excited. Like. Like I said, super happy telling everybody in the world that he know like mm-hmm. this is my big brother. Like even until it was like when like before he passed, anytime I saw him, anytime he posted a picture, I was reposting him. Like that's that's it was just like how I was yeah. uh, with my brother, um, and that's how he was with like any any females in his family. Like he looked up like looked for him, like looked out for him all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember one time specifically, it's crazy. So one time I had a basketball game mm-hmm. down by where he lived at. So I had a game. I didn't bring no money with me. We had we had practice like it was like a run through at their court or whatever. I called him. I was like, "Yo, like you know, I'm down here um, in, at, at Temple, but I'm hungry and I don't got no money. All my teenagers about to go get food, but I don't have no money." So he met like literally just met me on the spot, gave me like twenty dollars just that's to get food. Dope. Like, and it was just like that's just how that's he dope. was. That's just like the mentality he had. He always looked out uh, for women, his family. So, um, and then unfortunately in May, uh, May 2019, uh, he lost his life. He was killed uh, on the crazy streets of Philly, but. You know, it, it at first it was hard to deal with. I mean, it's still course, hard to deal with. Of course, um, it was very yeah. hard. But I think I started to switch it. It's like for him, he was a rapper. He was up and coming rapper. Um, but he didn't really get the chance to really go out as much as he mm-hmm. wanted, like do like do as much as he want with it. Um, so after he like released his first song on Apple Music, is when like after that, it's like kind of after after that happened, he kind of he passed away or whatever. Um, so me, I always look at it like you know he had a gift. Um, this is what he wanted to do, but he didn't get the chance to really do that. Right. So that's why, like I said, that's why I came up with the photography business, and I actually put it in his name. Mm. Um, so LLV, it stands for Long Lasting Visions, but also Long Live Verge. Mm. Um, Verge was his his name. So yeah, I mean, for me, it, it was hard, but yeah. I kind of tried to flip the script and as turn it should. into something positive, and you know, do as the the should. whole photography business. Did you? Method. Did you? Of course, you know, you said it was hard, but did you truly? Like, are you? I mean, I don't think you'll ever be healed, mm-hmm. but are you, did you accept it? Like, are you okay with it? Like, have you accepted the fact that he's no longer here? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, of course you've gotten over it. Of course you're still going to grieve, but mm-hmm. you know, some people still hold on to things for so long yeah. that it's like, they truly don't realize that sometimes you have to let things go, you know? 
And not to say that you can't grieve, you know, you can't grieve it, but it's just like sometimes, you know, you got to be able to move on from things like that. Because mm. if you don't find it in yourself to be to, able to yeah. move on from certain things, you're going to be holding yourself back from so many exactly. things. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm sure your brother uh, was a great individual. I never had the chance to meet him. I'm sure I would have met him. He would have been a great guy. But um, were, do you think that you've gotten to the point where it's like you're okay? You know what I'm saying? Um, like you've accepted it? Or do you still find yourself like, like, damn it, like I really wish he was here, you know, like yeah. things like that? Um. So you can never say, I, I think I, I can never say, like, I got to a point where I'm okay. Yeah. Um, I got to a point where it was, it's easier to handle, easier to go. deal with. Yep, so, like, for me, answer. like, um, when it first happened, it was just certain stuff that I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. um, because it reminded me of him and took me back to that place. Even still now to this day, like, honestly, like, I watch a lot of TV shows sometimes. And sometimes, like, if it has a scene on it, I can't watch it. Or, like, I can't, like, I can't even manage it. I'll just break down. Gotcha. Um, so, like, even now, still literally to this day, uh, what was I watching the other day? I can't remember what I was watching the other day. But I was watching something the other day, and they had a scene where somebody was killed. Mm. And as much as, like, sometimes, it's weird because, like, sometimes it'll happen, sometimes it won't. But, like, sometimes I'm just... It just clicked, it just clicked. And I had to turn it off before like it got yeah. to me too much. Um, it's still certain songs that if it come on, it's uncontrollable. Yeah. Like it's uncontrollable tears for me. Yeah. But I mean, I've gotten to the point where it's easier to deal with. Um, like I can actually talk about it now. I can talk about like the situation stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it definitely still like even like now. So like the, the weather is starting to change. This is around the time where I start having yeah, like, having moments. having moments exactly yeah. like. So he was killed in May. Um, so around, I would say like March, once the weather starts breaking, yeah, I, I, start, really I start gets. getting it because yeah. that's just what it reminds me of. Philadelphia is a city where, no, it's not even when the weather breaks, but Philadelphia is a city where when, when the weather starts breaking, people start going crazy. Mm -hmm. So like, that's what it takes me back to. When the, when the weather starts breaking and people are outside again, I always had the moments. Yeah. So like around March, I'll start having my moment and then April, I might be okay. Yeah. And then when May come, I'm back to it because that was the month. So like, you know, it's, it's up and down. Um, but I definitely, I think I've finally been able to accept the fact that it's, you know, it's true. Yeah. Because no matter how much you dwell on it, it is not going to change right. the facts. So, yeah, I mean, it's still, like I said, it's still hard, but. Yeah. And, I, and I, I guess that's true because, I mean, you're talking about them, you know, right now. And I can see that, of course, you still have those moments where you get emotional. Um, but you mentioned, you know, Philly, you know, talk about, I know you said you're from Philly, but talk about the streets of Philly now, you know, yeah. talk about what it was like growing up, you know what I mean? Yeah. And some of the memories you had there and then the things that we see now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I look at, you know, Philadelphia, I've ne and this is so crazy because I have the utmost respect for Philly, mm. um, but I've always been afraid, it's crazy to say, but I've been afraid of Philly from yeah. the first moment that I went out there. I remember the first time I went to Philadelphia, um, what we, it was, we was going to some place i can't remember where we was going mm. uh, but we went out to philadelphia and i don't want to say afraid of philly because you know what i'm saying not afraid yeah but, but you always had was, like yeah. yeah i always had those things in my mind like as soon as i got there it was just like these two guys going crazy in the streets like it was weird you know what yeah. I mean? it was so weird and i'm like wow like i really pray for philly you know mm. what i mean because i didn't really know philly was in that bad of a you know place and i mean yeah. of course you know this they're doing things to try to improve it but you know, talk about what it's like for you to see how your city, where you're from, you know, mm -hmm. the place that you call home is just like transitioning from yeah. a place where you love. But now I think it's safe to say that a lot of people don't feel safe yeah. in Philly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how does that make you feel knowing that, man, like, and your your, your brother, yeah. it, you know, he got killed. Was it in Philly? Yeah. Was, he yeah. got killed in Philly, like you mentioned. So it's like, how does that make you feel? Like, dang, I grew up in an amazing place. I love my hometown. I'm always right Philly, but yeah. like, you know, with the things that you see going on right now in the media and these kids, you know, yeah. just going crazy. Like, what does that mean to you? So for me, like, growing up in Philly, it was like, it was completely different from what you see now. Yeah. So when I was a kid, we was outside. We was running around. We could run around three blocks and come back mm -hmm. and mom know we fine because the people in the neighborhood know who you are. They look out for you. The older people in the, the neighborhood, if you do something wrong, they're going to grab you up and they're going to bring you back home. Right. Like, you know, it, it's different now at this point where, like, kids don't even go outside. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I, I hate that. I've always, I always say that I love where I'm from, but I hate what it's become. Mm -hmm. um, I love this. I love that I'm from Philly. I, I'll say it all day. I yeah, I'm from that. Philly, which is, like, hey, I'm from Philly. I but I hate, I, I hate what, what it has become. It's, it's like, it, I don't even understand it's it now. It's like, hard to explain. Yeah, it's hard to explain. 
And, you know, that brings up another point for me because it's like, you know, you mentioned, you know, being able to be outside and that that makes me think of community. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because I remember, I know for us, we could be like, yo, I grew up from New York, you grew up from Philly, and it was really your community vibe yeah. just specifically because you was able to go outside and you had yeah. your neighbors. Yeah. You had the people on the yeah. block. You know, you it was a community. You know what I'm saying? You could just go to the corner store, whatever the exactly. case may be. But I remember hearing this interview. Well, it wasn't an interview, but it was a little clip from Kevin Hart. Um, mm. And he was saying that kids these days are stripped from that uh, community aspect, more specifically uh, the kids of celebrities, mm. but even the people from where he's from, which is Philly. Yeah. Because one is if you're a kid of a celebrity, it's like you live in a suburban area. You have a yeah. nice crib, security, so they don't get to go outside and go to the corner yeah, store. Because you, you can't. Cause but you, you, exactly, because it's like dangerous. You, you, well, it's dangerous. But now, not only that, but him being from Philly is like. My kids will never be able to experience the childhood that I had exactly. because they don't have that, you know, because of the safety of yeah. what it's become to this day. And it just makes me think like, man, so many kids really do miss that opportunity because, you know, it, parents these days, well, I would hope that they're becoming very strict about their kids really mm. being able to be in that community vibe. So it's like, do you think that that community uh, aspect is being taken away? And, yeah. it, and, and it's to a certain extent. I definitely, yeah, I definitely think so because, uh, like I said, I have a six-year-old sister mm -hmm. and love her to death. Um, but the difference when I came up from where she came up is she wants to sit in the house and, and watch YouTube mm -hmm. or be on her iPad. And like sometimes, like we get we get mad about it. We like yo go outside, but we have to remember that she can't go outside right. because that's not that's not the city. That's not what we have no more. We don't right. have those same opportunities. She don't have those same opportunities that we had. You know, when we were coming mm -hmm. up, she go outside. Anything could happen. So like. We at the same time we want her to go outside. We at the same time we don't. We don't want right. her. We don't, don't want her to be outside. outside. Yeah. Like we scare her anytime she go outside. Mm -hmm. So it's like as much as you want her to, she can't. It's like it's not. It don't have. We don't have that community aspect anymore. Where kids is just outside playing and she yeah. could just go make a friend. So like now, like it's it's different because like. So for me, I'm very social. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people who know me, they know I'm very social. Um, with her, she might go out and she's she's social too, but she has to get to that point with you. So right. like if I bring her around, like you know, all our friends, they all love her. But if I bring her around somebody she don't know, she gonna she not gonna try to talk very to shy. him. She gonna be very shy. She gonna want to play on the phone and just sit there and watch YouTube. But it's because that she is because she didn't come up that way. She yeah. didn't come up where she can go outside and make a friend. Yeah. So like that's like it, it's a difference where like the way we came up, the way she came up, mm -hmm. where you know she she don't she have the same anything. opportunities to to that's like crazy. reach out. And to do people. you think that's hard? I mean, because I have such a huge gap already mm -hmm. in age. But do you think it's hard telling you know a kid you know what i'm saying although she was growing up on youtube and all i mean you know that's what she liked to do do you think it's hard to sometimes really be real with a kid and let them know why they can't do certain things so like for an example it's like you know you got to let them know about you know racism you got to mm. let them know about yeah. you know the danger that comes with being in the city do you think it's hard to have those combos or better yet did you have a conversation like that with your little sister you know like uh, have you ever had like that real heart to heart really breaking down like this is really why we can't do certain things anymore. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Crazy thing is, no, but she's so aware. Mm. Like she, she, she knows. Like oh. it, it's scary because, like, so we had a um, another person that I know that was like dear to my heart that passed away. My little sister, so Danae's best friend. Mm -hmm. She was like a little sister to me. So like when I say I lost my brother, I also say I lost you know my sister. sister. Um, but she recently was killed in Philadelphia and. When we told Riley, it was like, it was like, yeah, like you know, Alice passed away. Um, just want to let you know. And she was like, how? At first, we didn't want to tell her, but then we just said it, like, you know, this is what happened. So yeah, so with her, um, you know, when she passed away, we didn't want to tell her what happened. And then we just told her, we was like, you know, she she was killed, and she understands it. Like it, it, it's when I, I feel like when I was a six year old, somebody would have told me that I was, just, I don't, yeah. you know, I don't know, but she she understands it. She knows that. People are, yeah. are, are crazy because as so and being in Philly, my mom always tried to keep us in the best part of the city. Mm -hmm. um, whenever she could, you know, like I said, we wasn't we wasn't the richest coming up. Um, but when she did have the opportunity, she moved us out of the hood. Mm -hmm. She moved us into a better in a, into a better place. So we were always in the better part of the city. But it got it's gotten to a point where that part is not the best part no more. Like they they that now like Riley has to wake up or be home from school and hear gunshots. Like I hate it, but. That's that's the truth of it. Like, it, it never was to that point where you know, like I said, my mom kept us out of the bad parts when she could. So we was always in the good part, and now like the good part is not even a good part. So like, it's as crazy as it is. I think she understands. I don't, you know, we haven't had the conversation, but 
I, I think she understands because that's that's how crazy the city has gotten. That's all yeah, you hear. It's, it's, so, it's so crazy, man. It kind of, you know, because when, when we talk about your little sister, I kind of think about, you know, my nieces and nephews mm. as well. And, you know, just like growing up in Brooklyn, you know, growing up in a part where, you know, craziness was going yeah. on. But, you know, I was able to be outside and I was able, able to make friends and kind of have that community aspect. But I think of my eight nieces and nephews, it's like, you know, they are so outgoing and they love... You know, it's kind of like the opposite. You know, yeah. you say Riley is more so. I mean, I mean, they're on YouTube and all that stuff too, but they want to be outside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I remember there was one time where, you know, I had to, I spoke to my nephew, my oldest nephew, and I said, you know, you got to be the protector. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, you got to protect your, your brothers and sisters mm. because things are not how it was when uncle was home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Things are not safe how it used to be and for him you know he was he was sad you know what i'm yeah. saying and it's so heartbreaking to see that because it's like what is the world truly coming to yeah you know what i mean and that's a conversation for a different day but it's like i just really wanted to understand you know what that was like for you having mm. that relationship because i see you and your sister hanging around together all the time and i just see your relationship yeah. it's like y'all are so tight but i know you know there's certain things that she would love to experience that yeah. you did that she can't just simply because of where y'all are from and that's yeah. the worst part it's yeah. like we're from philly so i can't even get to explore philly or do the things that i want to really do yeah. um in philly so that's that's just like something i really wanted to really dive into and the next thing i really want to kind of um get into for you and i want the audience to really learn about you is you know obviously let's talk about your sexuality because mm. i think you know that's something that the audience can learn about as well mm. you know people listen and i just really want them to be comfortable and I think, you know, it may be a very touchy, you know, subject, mm. you know, it may be sensitive to some people, but I know you very well. You know what I mean? We're great friends. You're the co-host. I mean, yeah. like, you know what I mean? I think some people may be looking at this like, well, you know, it's like two completely different people. Yeah, like, but, it, but it's not. It's really but not. But it's really it's not. Really you know, not. I think we have a lot in common. So for the people who may watch this or for the people who may hear it and listen, when did you know personally that you wanted to go that route? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, when did you know? At what point did you know that that was... You like girls, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That you knew you was gay. Yeah, so I feel like I feel like for a while, I felt like I liked girls. It, it's been a minute. Um, but for me, my biggest thing, I was I always, I always feared, like for me, like I said earlier um, in, the, in the episode, I my family is my everything. Mm -hmm. So like I always look to them for approval or, or look to them for acceptance. So it was like I was scared to like to actually come out because I'm like, I don't want them to be disappointed in me mm -hmm. or I don't want them to feel different about me. Um, so it was just like, no, like, no, I'm not. So I hit it for, for a long time. Like, I masked it. I walked around saying my favorite color was pink because I uh, felt like that was, like, yeah, yeah, she can't be careful uh, because it's pink. Like, no, seriously. Like, so that's how it was for me. Like, I, um, I don't know. I just always, not always, but I, I for uh, my, my younger years, I always tried to mask it or mask it or, like, say, you know, that's not what it is. I'm just a tomboy. I like, I like boys, mm -hmm. but I'm just a tomboy. Um, so... But when I actually really just like embraced it and said it is what it is, uh, was college. So freshman year of college, I was like, you know, this is what it is. All my friends knew. Yeah. My family didn't know because I was away in school, so mm -hmm. they didn't know nothing. Um, but I actually decided my sophomore year to come out. And the reason that, you know, that happened was because um, at the time I had a girlfriend. And she, like, we were getting very comfortable. We were getting very comfortable to the point where, like, she had took my phone one time and about to post on Instagram. And I was like, you can't do that. Uh-oh. <laughs> like, you can't do that. Uh -oh. Not even Snapchat. It was something. I think it was Snapchat. Probably was because Snapchat yeah, was I think it was, Yeah, it was yeah, Snapchat. Snapchat was it was busting. Snapchat. Yeah. So I was like, uh, you can't do that. And she was like, why? I'm like, uh, my, like, my family don't know. Like, you know that. She was like, oh, you know what? Yeah. You know, I completely understand. And the time she was very understanding. She was like, mm -hmm. you know, I completely understand. And I'm not going to ever make you feel like you got to tell them when you feel comfortable. Because, you know, she's like, she went through that before. Mm -hmm. Like, with her family. Um, she's like, when you feel comfortable, then you then you bring it out there because you don't want ever want to say it and then not 100% feel it, and then your family feel away, and then you can't you can't ever go back. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it was just more so like when you know. Um, so like for anybody out there, um, you know, if you feel that way, just make sure you know first. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're 100% like idea. you know. Make yeah. sure you know that that's what it is mm -hmm. before you just put it out there. You know, now it's like much easier. Um, it's much easier to come out now like yeah. honestly like, I, th I feel like it's way more accepting now than it was before. um before um but yeah i feel like don't ever don't put yourself in that predicament predicament until you uh, really you ever, sure. you're really sure about it yeah um so for me like don't ever make no don't, don't let anyone make you feel like you have to do it, Got it. um don't let anyone make you feel uncomfortable about it it is who you it is who you are mm -hmm. 
Like, if, if this is the life you want to live, only you have to live your life. So if you live your entire life feeling like, oh, no, I got to hide who I am, then you, you're not living your life. You're living for somebody else, which they're, they're living life. their own life, doing mm -hmm. what they want to do. You got to do what you want to do. Um, so for me, it was just like more so when I finally like decided to tell my family, it was like, you know, this is this is what I want to do. This is what I'm comfortable doing. And the first place I came out to, shout out to my aunt, um, she made me feel very, like, very okay. She made me feel very comfortable. Um, she lightened the blow. So it was just like, it was easier. She yeah. made it a lot easier. Um, like I said, I was already out to my friends and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it is, for me, it's more so like, like I said, only you got to live your life. Yeah. So if you live your life trying to be somebody else, whoever is going to feel away, they're going to feel away regardless. regardless. Um, they're going to live their life regardless of what you're doing. So you might not, they might be doing something that you don't approve of. It's their life. Right. And that's all they're going to do is live it. So like for me, it was just like, like I said, I'm going to live my life the way I want to do it. Um, I'm going to be happy because yeah. if I'm not happy, then I can't make somebody else happy. So it was right. just like, I'm not going to keep hiding. This is what it is. And, and this is why I, I wanted you to be the co-host because I, you know, like I mentioned, I think you're going to bring, you know, just so much authenticity you know what i'm mm. saying like i think you know you ha we have such an equal balance and you know just personality and just different perspectives you know and talking about you know you coming out to your family you know hiding it up until college you know how did you so i know of course you wanted to please your family mm. and, and all of these things but i know it was still fearful to you to like even tell your aunt because mm. it's like you probably thinking about what if she go crazy what yeah. if she go crazy what if she go crazy but it's like did you get to a point where it was just like, now I just don't care about the response? Or was it, I got to just tell them now? Like It so was, yeah, it was more so really, I got to tell them. It was like you have yeah. to tell them. Okay. It was like because I don't want them to find out on social media. I don't want to become too comfortable. Got and it. now, you got know, it. somebody sees something mm -hmm. and they're like, wait, what? So like for me, like it was more so like, it wasn't I don't care about the response. I still was scared. Mm -hmm. It was more so like. Is either I tell y'all or y'all find out. Right. <laughs> I'd rather tell y'all, so you know, it, you that's, that's kind of what it was. Like for me, so, and, and even like, so the first girlfriend I had, like, she she helped me also. Like, so she was like, you know, Child there, team, like, whoever you are. <laughs> like, she was there and stuff like that. So, like, you know, she she helped me find out, like, you know, this is what you want to do, then, then you know, do it and I'll be here for you, you know, tell your family, like, stuff like that. So, like, for a while, like I said, I didn't come out, and she was okay with that. But then when I did, she was cool. My aunt helped me, and then from there, it was like, all right, my aunt know, now my other aunt know, now my mom know, now my yeah, uncle know. know. Like I was just like, you know, letting people know as it went. So it, it you know, some people didn't take it, you know, the, like how one of them had taken yeah. it. But listen, this this life I'm living now, and everybody loves me, so yeah. like, I'm okay. And I, and I'm, okay I'm, with I'm that. I'm so glad that you decided to like talk about this because. I know for a fact that this is going to help somebody yeah. really realize, yeah. like, you know, I have to embrace who I am. You know what I mean? And last thing about, you know, just the LGBTQ, you know, just everything going on in the world today, aside mm -hmm. from you personally, do you feel as though, um, what are some things that you would like to see change? You know, because I, I know yeah. this is this is a touchy s subject for many, too, just like how we talk about racism and Black Lives Matter and all this other stuff. Yeah. This is a very significant topic nowadays. Yeah. So for you being an individual that's a part of that community, what are some things that you would love to see change? You know what I mean? In terms of pay, in terms of equal, you know, opportunities. Like mm -hmm. what are some things for you personally you think, you know, or that you would like that's a great to question. change? That's a great question. If you've thought about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, for one, I would, I would want people to understand that you can't help it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like I can't just go in the back of my head and turn off a switch and say, no, like, boys. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, this is, like, for that more the older crowd, like, you you feel a way towards me because of who I like, but it don't got nothing to do with you. Like, who I decide to, to be with or to marry has nothing to do. You have, you have no concern. Mm -hmm. You got to see me today, maybe never see me again. Right. Don't, like, don't worry about what I'm doing. Well, if the person that I'm with is not uncomfortable, then why should you care? Right. Um, so, I, I think for me, I think the biggest thing I want people to understand is, Understand that it's not something that we can just turn off and turn mm -hmm. on. Like this is who I am. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. Some people may be, some people may not be, you know, as deep into it as you yeah. know, as a person who's actually gay. But understand that, like, like I said, this is you have no. It's a lifestyle. You, it's, it's a lifestyle, and it, it has nothing. Like literally, what I do, choose to do mm -hmm. has nothing to do with you. Like you don't, you're not affected by it right. at all. It is not affecting no you. <laughs> it's not affecting you. It's not affecting your child unless your child is gay. Yeah. But that's still your child's life. I and mean, you got to, sometimes you just got to respect. Everyone has their own life and you got to respect it. Yeah. 
you don't have to live that life. So, yeah. you know, live your life and do what you do. But also understand that you got to respect everybody else, too. Because I can say I don't like a straight person. Like, yeah. like But it, it's irrelevant. Like, yeah. who I'm choosing to sleep with, who I choose to be with is irrelevant yeah. to you. So. I agree with that a thousand percent. And, and I mean, that kind of gave me a different perspective. You mm -hmm. know, I haven't really thought about it like that. Because, I mean, you know, I'm not against LGBTQ. Like, I have mm -hmm. friends that are yeah. obviously yeah. homosexual. You know, obviously you and many other people. Um, but I think that's a great perspective that you give people. You know what I mean? Because we do have to start to understand and sympathize with them. Like, y'all didn't choose to be that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. of course you did choose to yeah. be that. But it's like, it happened. Yeah. I think you gave a great perspective of... You, we can't just turn it on and off. Yeah. Like, if this is something that I'm attracted to, if this is something that my heart is, you know, gravitating towards, it's very hard to just kind of say, oh, okay, mom, well, you don't agree with this, dad, you don't agree with this, let yeah. me just go back to yeah. the normality of and it. Would, you know I'm what saying, I mean? I like, I think it's very too. hard to do that. Yeah, I am also say, like, with that, um, also people need to understand, like, society parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, they also got to understand that when you're putting that on somebody, you don't know how hard it is. Right. It's so hard to to live a life that you don't want to live. Mm -hmm. Like, people are literally battling with themselves saying, no, I'm not gay. Like, and it's hard. It's not easy. Like, it's hard to literally sit there yeah. and tell yourself that you're not who you think you are right. or not who you know you are. Um, so, yeah, like that that's another thing I want to speak on. It was another thing. It was another point. I can't remember now. It's going to probably come back, though. Yeah, it was definitely another it point. Was it, was good, it was a it's good probably, one, yeah, too. It's going to ah. come back. It's going to come back. But it was I, a good one. Look, was it about... Uh, was it about yeah, it was going to come back. Dang. It's going to come back. It's all good. That means you're flowing. It's going to come yeah. back, though, hopefully. Uh, but, yeah, I agree with that a thousand percent. Like, it's... You know, it's very it's very hard for yeah. individuals, and I understand that a thousand percent. That's why I'm so happy to have. Remember, right remember? <laughs> that's why I'm so happy to have again you as a coach because it's very diverse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We could talk about things like this because I probably wouldn't have felt comfortable talking about that, yeah. obviously. But because you know you are a part of it, it's easier. But you can go ahead and touch on it yeah. before you forget it. Yes. Yeah, so also, when you ask about like what do I what do I want to see change? I want to see so like the stereotype. Mm -hmm. Like so, people look at me and say, "Oh, she likes girls." She's masculine, or oh, she's a dyke, or oh, she's this. I, I, I'm not a person. I don't put a name to who mm -hmm. I am. I am, a, I am Bria, and I like girls. Mm -hmm. I'm not a stud. I'm not a dyke. I'm not. A, I'm not any of those. I'm not a label. Yeah. I am Bria. Like we don't put labels on straight people. Like you're right. straight. You're straight. That's right. what it is. It's right. so, like for me, like right. I'm gay. I like girls. Don't put a label to me. I hate when people say oh, or people like attach like a male's the way a male has to live his life to a, the way a gay person has to live. Like no, right. no, like no, like if I am. Let's say I, I'm living in a house with my dad and mm -hmm. my mom and my you know my sisters or whatever. Don't think that because I'm gay I gotta take out the trash. No, mm -hmm. I'm not a man. I am still a woman. Mm -hmm. And people look at me and say, oh, you know, she she may not wear a dress and some heels, so therefore she's she's more masculine. No, I'm not. I am still actually very feminine. Wow. For people who like people who don't know me intimately, I am very very feminine. Wow. So any like any person I've talked to or any girlfriend I've had, they know that yo like I'm. Still very feminine, like don't. So when people look at it like, oh, you know, like a gay girl is this, a gay girl, it's, it don't think about that. A gay girl is just a girl who likes girls. Wow. Like so, that's another thing I want to see change. Like, I hate when people look at look at someone's sexuality and base yeah. them their personality off so, it. That's their a, sexuality is not the same as who they believe they are. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's like saying. It's like saying they're, they're switching roles, so because you're gay, yeah, they think you should have male responsibilities. Exactly, which is not which the is case. not the case because I'm still, still do female things. <laughs> I'm like, still I'm still a girl. Yeah, it's like why are you telling just just because I'm gay, I can't like I'm not doing yeah. female things. Like, I mean, like and that. don't get me wrong, there are some people in the you know LGBTQ um, community who who want to have who want to live that lifestyle. They yeah. want to you know do, be a transgender, you know, and, yeah. and that's okay. Right. That is okay. Now those people they they may want those responsibilities as male. They want yeah. they they may want to be looked at yeah. as a male. Um, but me like I still have long hair. I yeah. still like I, I, I'm I'm not hiding any. I'm not hiding the fact that I'm a girl. Mm -hmm. I'm still a girl. And I know I am. I feel that I'm a girl. I just like girls. Gotcha. So like for me like that's just one thing I want to be changed. If if you don't if if a person doesn't tell you they want to be looked at as a man, don't look at them as a man. Got you. Just because I like girls does not mean that Got I am you. any less of a female. And how how offensive is that? Very. Like, like very. talk about that real quick. Like, how offensive is it? Because, again, you know, you bring up the fact that, you know, people place these things, but people got to start to realize, like, you really don't know unless you're in it yeah. or really experiencing it. So yeah. how offensive is it when it's people very. do that? Yeah, you know, it's like, very. Um, I remember in college at Dell State, uh, we was at a party and somebody said something referred to me as a dyke. 
I was like, yo, don't, don't, don't call me that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, don't, don't say that. I don't, I don't like that. And I'm not like, mm-hmm. he kept saying it. He kept saying it. So at the time I was with one of my friends who like, you know, at the time, he, like, he called me my, his little sister. And he beat the boy up because I told you so stop saying it. And you're going to keep that. saying it. And now you're being smart. Like he, he started like calling me a dyke bitch, like, like mm-hmm. beat word. So I'm like, yo, like that's, that's very offensive. Now yeah. you want to get beat up. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, don't, like, oh, that's. You don't like that. Yeah. I, don't do that. Like, it, it's become a point, like, if, if I don't tell you, don't say that. Like, got it's, you. people got to understand, like, it's, it's very disrespectful. Yeah. Um, it's not okay. Yeah. And, yeah, I agree so it's with very, that, man, because I be looking at things like that, and I be like, yo, I, I, like, I get it. I get why people would think that, because yeah. it's like, okay, well, she don't wear the tight pants all the time, and all, like, yeah. she don't, but it's like. You still don't know. They still have preferences, yeah. right? Like it's still different. We don't know um, what some of the boundaries that we can and cannot cross because yeah. a, you're not gay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like you don't know what you know what it feels like for some, to call somebody something that they don't want to be called. So I think that that um, that clears the air a lot because I've always wondered that like how offensive is it truly mm. to a gay person to be called something that they truly don't want to be called? Yeah, like you so know? so like in terms like like I said in terms of the labels. Um, People look at me and say stud. Mm-hmm. Like, and, I, and I'm not going to say like. And stud is, I've never really heard. So stud is, stud is just like, so it's a gay girl okay. who who dresses more masculine, but it's okay. still, it's still, still into a, her feminine side. Like she's God, still, still a girl. she's not like sagging her pants, oh, cutting okay. her hair, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so like for me, people look at me and say it. And like, you know, if, if you say it, I'm not going to be like, oh no, I'm offensive. I want to, you know, mm-hmm. curse y'all. Like for me, like if you say it and I correct you, then okay. It is what it is because mm-hmm. I also understand that not everyone understands the lifestyle I live. Not everyone knows. Like if you're a, a straight man, you might understand that. Mm-hmm. So it's okay to it's okay for you to say it and I correct you. But once I correct you and you keep you continue to do it, now you're being disrespectful. Right. So like for me, like I said, I'm not gonna like sit here and be upset with somebody who says something that they thought was okay. You know, mm-hmm. it just depends on how you react when I correct you. Right. Um. So so yeah, for some for some people they they don't understand that they don't live their life. So you can't. That's like being mad at somebody for judging a situation. If it looks like this, then you know, and, and this is right. how I've been educated on. You can't you can't help how someone else was educated. Yeah. So if if it was an ignorant person, let's say like let's say you came up with where straight I mean, where gay thing was gay was not a thing. Mm-hmm. It wasn't okay. You came up a household where they shut it down. You couldn't be around it. I can't help that you, that's how you came up. Yeah. All I can do is try to educate you in right. the way that you take that on is, is the way you take it on, right. right? So like, so for me, like I said, it's not a thing where like, I'm just like, if you say it, I'm just like, oh no, like now nah, I'm, I'm upset. Mm-hmm. But once I correct you, if you keep on going, then I feel nah, very so offended. Yeah. yeah, and I agree with that a thousand percent. Um, nah, that, that makes a lot of sense, man. I hope, you know, the people really took something from that because that's a very sensitive topic mm. for many people, especially if you are a part of the community. So um, I think that was important. And, you know, what I want this to dive into is, you know, let's talk a little bit about your, well, actually, before we get to that, one more thing in regards to your sexuality, you know, you you always knew that you was, you know, mm. you always, you said, like you said, you always had a feeling that you was gay. Were you treated any different? You know what I mean? Like, you, you know how sometimes as a kid, when you grow up, mm. you feel like you're being treated different than anybody mm. else? Like, yeah. I know your family didn't know, but do you feel like they had an idea to a point where it's like they treated you different, maybe? Or, like, do you feel like um, you was probably, like, excluded from certain things? Does that make sense? You know what I'm yeah, no, like, yeah, I definitely agree with you. Like, were you treated any yeah, differently crazy, growing up because yeah. of that? No, crazy thing is, I, you know, like, people, I, I, you know, shout out to people who, who had these stories, but, like, I've never had, like, a discriminative story. Yeah. Like, I've, I've never been discriminated against my sexuality, yeah. at least in my face. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, I've... I've actually lived a, 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 a great, a great life. Uh, you know, after I came out, um, of course, there was like you know little things here and there where like my family, my mom might not agree with it, yeah. or she didn't understand, or she might have got mad. But like I said, like I, I think I had a very nope. easy uh, coming out yeah. and like living the life yeah. afterwards. So and I think I that's really, okay because I mean like it's, it's everybody don't need to have a bad you know, yeah. upbringing. So I think that's good. So another thing I would say is, do you were you ever confused? Like, was it ever, so maybe that's the question. Were you ever confused to a point where it was like, you know, you really wasn't sure which route you were going in? Like, you know how sometimes you could be so, you know, on yourself about like, damn, I don't really know if I'm straight, you know, if I like girls. Like, were you ever at a point where it was like, this is really becoming stressful or like, this is really bothering me right now because I don't know what I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you know how you was talking about earlier you know, people looking at themselves in the mirror and really battling that moment of, 
damn, I'm gay, I gotta accept it, or mm. whatever the case. So did you ever have that moment of like looking at, looking at yourself or talking to yourself and being like, man, like, what's going on? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I would say probably like, probably high school. High school. Because um, high school is when I was like, girls were like trying to talk to there me and stuff go. like that, and I was like, no, like, I'm not gay. And then I get home and I'm like, bro, like, you're still you texting, like, you're still texting this girl, you're still yeah, flirting with this girl, you're, you're gay, yeah. like, mm-hmm. get over it. Um, but I, I don't think it ever got to a point, like, I know, like, some people, like, it's, like, very hard. Yeah. Um, for me, like, I don't know, it, it, I never, like, I never made it so hard on myself. Like I said, I, I knew it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I fought myself, like, I was saying, like, I'm texting these girls, I'm texting these girls, but, like, it was never, like, oh, my God, like, I, I'm, 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 a, like yeah. I'm going crazy, yeah. like, you know, it never got to that point. So I'm very thankful. Okay. Um, I, my sanity never, like, my sanity never went. Left. Got it. Based on like, because like, because yeah, yourself, I, I didn't lose my I never lost yeah, myself never exactly. Lost yourself, never really lost myself. Yeah, pre- All right. that makes sense. Yeah, I just wanted to really know because I know sometimes you know although you had that smooth transition, which yeah. I guess is the great greatest way to explain it, I think sometimes you still have those moments where like dang like, yeah, really like, you know, like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, I definitely moments, like, I definitely had those moments. I definitely had crazy. those moments. Yeah. Now nah, that's dope. So I'm glad that you definitely cleared that up. And this kind of gonna tie into you know a couple of things. And I kind of want to talk about um currently. Let's talk about today now. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about, you know, your your passions as of today, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you grew up as an athlete. You loved playing basketball. You know, you're such a family person. But, you know, as of today, you're a creative, right? Mm-hmm. You've tapped into your artistry um, in terms of, you know, Photoshopping and, you know, doing, you know, uh, photography, mm-hmm. editing. Like, how did you go from athlete, you know, basketball to artistry, creativity, yeah. fashion. Like, how, how did you transition over to that? Mm-hmm. You know, because you talked a little bit about it in the previous um, episode, but how did you really tap into that creativity? What really brought that out of you? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I know your brother played a role in the name of the brand, but, like, at what point did you really realize that this is what makes you generally happy? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Being a creative in your own right. Um, so for me... Um I always was I always drew. Um, I was always drawing. Um, sketchbook, my notebook. I was always drawing. Um, then I, you know, I, like I said, I was playing basketball stuff like that. I tore my ACL. At that tore my ACL, I was like in my trainer's office all the time. Mm. So now I was like, you know what? Like, you know, I like this athletic training thing. Like, I get to be close to athletes. Like the injuries, like were were fascinating to me. Um, so I, I took on a love for that. Mm-hmm. And then after that, well, also in high school, I was for my four years of high school, I was a uh, um, Comp tech major, so computer technology. I was making video games. I was doing graphic design. I was doing logos, websites, all of that stuff. So then, after doing that for four years, I was like, "No, nah, I don't want to do that no more." <laughs> so I went, you know, I so I tapped into, you know, the, the athletic training. But then recently, like, well, not recently, but um, like I said, after my brother, my, after my brother passed. I grew a love for for, for photography. Mm-hmm. It was kind of before he passed, but then after he passed, when I really like branded and stuff like that. Um, starting to fall in love with the pictures, the creativity, and all over again. I think my mind is just meant to be creative. Right. Like, honestly, like, I, I try to switch over to, you know, the medical field, and I still love it. I'm still fascinated with injuries, the human body, stuff like that, but I think my mind is just meant to be creative. Mm-hmm. So, like, I fell back in love with it, uh, started back drawing a little bit. Um, I drew a couple of, like, my tattoos and stuff like that, and then I was just like, yo, like, this this is what mm-hmm. I like doing. Like, yeah, I, I my job is to do this, but... I love being creative. Yeah. So like I back into the logos, back into like photography, back into the creative stuff, back into like drawing outfits and like yeah. stuff like that. Like I don't know. I just think, I just think my mind is just meant That's to be dope. creative. Yeah. That's dope. And I kind of want to challenge you here because I think you know I think you know we definitely want to tap into some of these things. So tap you know tapping into that creativity, right? And this is even something I could talk about too. What is if anything, right? What is something that you might have you may be struggling with today in terms mm. of balancing, you know, your work life, yes. your creativity life. So, or just, you know, your entrepreneurial life in general, what are some of the strugg- struggles you're facing right now? Because I'm sure there's some people mm. who may be listening that's a creative and trying to understand. So what are some struggles you're facing right now? But more importantly, how are you tackling them? Yeah. Like, what are you doing to put yourself in position to continuously progress? You know what mm. I'm saying? Because I know some people can be in a place of, frustration or whatever the case may have you, but how are you finding it in yourself to continuously just stay consistent yeah. and keep going? So what are some of the struggles that you may be experiencing? Because I'm sure somebody may be experiencing what you're experiencing. Mm. 
but how are you tackling it so that way the people listening can understand that here are some things that you can do to obviously get through these moments mm. in your creative journey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so for me, um, I work a nine to five. Yeah. I work a regular nine to five. Um, and then I also am a coach, a modeling coach. Mm. I am uh, taking pictures. I'm doing logos. I'm making banners. I'm making flyers. I'm making, you know, all of that stuff. So like for me, um, I think my hardest thing is time management. Mm -hmm. um, I think also the hardest thing that I struggle with is realizing that I have to invest in myself. Mm. So like I said, I work my nine to five, mm. but sometimes I have to think like, yo, like you got to take off because you keep working for these people and not make, making time for your business is never going to take off. So I think my biggest thing, like if you're able to, like, you know, not everyone yeah, has, yeah. if not everyone has the ability, um, the ability, the ability <laughs> to take off and, mm -hmm. and focus on themselves. Um, but I think when, and if you are able to then take the opportunity right. because you don't take the opportunity to take off work and just chill. Don't take the opportunity right. to take over. Don't take the opportunity to just lay down. Take the opportunity to really like work on yourself, invest in yourself because you're investing in these companies. They invested in themselves yeah. and now they have a company yeah. and now you work for them. So you got to take time and, and really like slow down and say, you know, I'm putting all of this into this job. I might need to take a, a three day. I might need to take three mm -hmm. days off and actually put it into myself because taking them three days off and then saying, yeah, I'm a rest. Yeah. You're gonna go right back into doing yeah. that job. Taking yeah. them three days off and actually putting it into your putting it into yourself. Now you might you might set yourself up when you come back for them three days and you might not have to work. Mm -hmm. Like, you know? So like it, of course it's gonna take longer than three days, but it's just it's just that one step. It's just the one step of taking the time out of your day to invest in yourself. Right. You gotta reinvest in yourself before you just keep putting yeah. it into the other business. And I think that's you know, just as entrepreneurs, we sometimes forget that it's yeah. important to invest in ourselves. You know what I mean? Because it's like we invest so much into somebody else's mm. vision and brand that it's like years go by until you realize that all them years you could have used a little bit of that time as well exactly. to yours. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, you saying time management, that's definitely something that I've struggled with as well. And again, we are two people who do so much things that's similar, you know, modeling, fashion, creativity, all those other things. And I've realized for me that I just had to get to a point where I had to do what was most important, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, whether it was having a nine to five or, you know, any other hobbies or whatever the case may be, I think people who are aspiring entrepreneurs or people who are, you know, in a place of having so many eggs in one basket, the easiest way for us to kind of balance that is just by figuring out what's most important for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and remember to just keep that sanity through it all because we're all going to have moments where we're overwhelmed. We're all going to have moments where we're going through things and time seems like it's not on our side, yeah. but that's where those me days come into play. That's where you are able to say, you know what? I need a mental day to just kind of relax and focus on my brain. Or even if you're somebody who you somebody who can't right working on a five or if you got an early shift, once you get off, you're going to have to stay up extra hours to, to yeah. work towards your craft. Exactly. So, you know, just really figuring about figuring out, you know, what's your goal? You know what I mean? What's your goal? What's your vision? I mean, what's most important? So I think that's why I really wanted to, you know, yeah. pick your brain on that because I know as entrepreneurs, you know, it's we don't always have it all figured out. Yeah. You know, people may be hearing people talk from their experience and we always talk about the good things, but people may not look at us and realize that, look, we still trying to figure out how to yeah. be the best yeah. at what yeah. we're trying to exactly. do, right? Like, we yeah. still trying to figure out how to be the best in all of these different things that we're tapping into. So I think that that's a great yeah. thing for you. And the next thing I would say you know, for you is out of everything that you've done, you know, creative journey, you know, athletic journey and, you know, just everything that's gone on in your life that you spoke about today. Um, what is some major life lessons you, you, you took away? You know what I'm saying? Because you are, you know, I like to call you, you know, for a universal child. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you just have the best of every, not the best of everything, but like, I feel yeah. like you're great Thank you. at many different things. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're just creative. You, you're talented. So, you know, what did you learn? growing up you know what i mean like what were you matter of fact better yet it's gonna be a little tricky but i know you can handle it if you were to look back 18 years ago you know what i mean 18 years ago and you having a conversation with little bria sitting in this chair yeah you know what i'm saying like what would you tell her you yeah. know what i mean like what would you it's tell crazy her because i was thinking about that you before you said, said it yeah, like, like that's that's what i was trying yeah. to say i'm actually i'm like yeah. that's, the, that's what i'm trying to say so like if bria's in this chair you know 18 years ago and you sitting next to her, like, what are some things you'll tell her for, you know, how to be prepared for where you are now? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, what are some yeah. tips you'll give her? So for me, um, growing up, I 
you know, I didn't know much about entrepreneurship. Nobody talk, told me about, uh -huh. you know, you can have your own. You don't have to work for somebody. You can, like, you know, growing up, I've seen, you know, I saw my, I watched my family work for other people. Um, so I, I think me, so like even going into college, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know much about college. Yeah. I didn't know about PWIs versus HBCUs. I didn't know I any. I, I really didn't. Yeah. Um, it just happened. It just so happened that, you know, my school was doing this and I, you know, went for it. But um, so I was going to say just, just coming up, I would, I would uh, educate little Bria and say like, you know, you don't have to work for somebody else mm -hmm. because now I'm looking like, yo, if I would have knew what I knew right yeah. now in college, I would have been like a mass comedy major or something because I want to work for myself. Mm -hmm. I want to, to be out there. I want to, you know, like not even mass comedy, but like something, something, that's gonna, it, something that's in the creative, that's creative yep. something in the creative that's where I can create too. my own yeah. because when it comes to like what I did go to school, for, what I did go to school for, it takes way more to you know open up your own yeah. like athletic practice or something yeah. like that. So whereas like I want to be creative and I want my own. So like, I would have you know I would tell younger Bree like you know you don't have to work for somebody. It's it's going to take time. It's going to take effort. It's going to take money. It's going to take a lot. Yeah. But you can have your own. 